When explaining calcium homeostasis for the FRCS examination, try to keep it simple. Think of it as three main hormones affecting three key areas of the body. Um, you can use this diagram to try to explain uh, different forms of rickets and other metabolic bone disorders. So calcium homeostasis, the three main hormones that you need to think about is parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, and calcitonin. And the three areas of the body that uh, this affects is the gut, or the GI tract, the bone, and the kidneys. So if we take, first of all, parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone is secreted by chief cells from the parathyroid gland in response to a low serum calcium. So that low serum calcium causes these chief cells to excrete parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid hormone, as I said before, has its effects on the gut, the bone, and the kidneys. Now, at the gut, it increases calcium and phosphate reabsorption, okay? Uh, in the bone, it increases osteoclastogenesis, uh, increases the activity and maturation of osteoclasts by three main mechanisms. Firstly, it increases osteoblastic differentiation, and in doing so, uh, this would uh, signal via the rank ligand rank pathway to your pre-osteoclasts, then causing mature osteoclasts. And that resorbs bone, and resorbing the bone releases calcium and phosphate. The second way it increases osteoclast activity and maturation is through inhibiting, so it has a negative effect, on osteopetegerin, or OPG. Now, OPG is a competitive uh, uh, inhibitor of rank ligand, which occurs endogenous, uh, endogenously, and, and it, it regulates osteoclastogenesis um, in, in, in the body. So by inhibiting this, you get actually more osteoclast differentiation and maturation. Number three, it has a positive effect, so it upregulates rank ligand. Uh, rank ligand is excreted by your osteoblasts and it attaches uh, to the rank receptor on pre-osteoclasts and in attaching, uh, sorry, on attaching the pre-osteoclast then matures into a fully activated osteoclast. And these osteoclasts, uh, through my previous video on how osteoclasts work, would resorb the, um, the inorganic extracellular matrix of the bone, uh, and that in turn releases calcium. Okay. In the kidneys, it has also three effects. So firstly, it increases the production of 1-alpha hydroxylase. Now, you'll see later on that 1-alpha hydroxylase is, important, uh, is an important enzyme for the uh, hydrolysis or hy adding a hy hydroxyl group to uh, 25 uh, vitamin D, uh, hydroxy vitamin D. Uh, because it gets uh, finally converted into its active form in the kidneys with this enzyme. Number two in the kidneys, it also increases calcium absorption. Uh, however, it, 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 uh, it increases also the, um, the excretion of phosphate in the kidneys. So actually you lose phosphate in the kidneys. So the net effect of all of this is important to know is that you get an overall increase in calcium. However, you get an overall decrease in phosphate because the excretion 
of phosphate in the kidneys outweighs the reabsorption in the gut. So the net effect is that you get an increase in calcium and a decrease in phosphate. So this is parathyroid hormone. The next hormone to talk about is your vitamin D. Now, vitamin D uh, comes from melanocytes, uh, from sunlight. That's where it's produced from. You also get it from your diet. Uh, however, the vitamin D that you get from sunlight and your diet comes from an, uh, an inactive form. It then travels to the liver and uh, you get a, a hydroxyl group added on to 2,5-hydroxy vitamin D, and then that, that hormone gets transferred to the kidneys, okay, where another hydroxyl group is added to 1,2,5-dihydroxy vitamin D, and that is active vitamin D. So, so in the kidneys, where the final active form of vitamin D is made, that vitamin D then has its effect on the three areas again. So again, we go to the gut, the bone, and the kidneys. So active vitamin D on the gut, uh, this increases calcium and again increases phosphate re reabsorption. Okay, in the bone, uh, the, the the way that uh, vitamin D works is it actually uh, works by stimulating uh, parathyroid hormone. So in the bone, it does all the, it has all the same effects on increasing osteoclastic activity through. The process of parathyroid hormone, as I mentioned, as I mentioned back here, so it has all the same effects. So um, that effect uh, is that it in increases calcium only. So that increases calcium. In the kidneys, it also has the same effect as the gut. It, it just increases calcium and increases phosphate reabsorption. So the overall net effect here of vitamin D is increased calcium and increased phosphate. The last hormone to talk about is your calcitonin. So your calcitonin is um, released from your thyroid gland, from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland and that is in a response to increased serum calcium. So when, when the body detects increased, uh, sorry, when, when the parafollicular cells increase, uh, detect an increase in um, calcium, serum calcium, it releases calcitonin. And the calcitonin, again, you would expect to have its effect on those three areas. In fact, in the gut, it, it doesn't have an effect. So <laughs> this is the exception to the rule, but that's easy to remember. No effect there. In bone, you simply just have to remember that it inhibits uh, osteoclasts. So it down-regulates osteoclasts uh, because it has essentially an opposite effect of parathyroid hormone. In the kidneys, it simply decreases calcium uh, and phosphate reabsorption. So you actually excrete more calcium and phosphate in the kidneys, and that's the role of calcitonin. So the net effect of calcitonin is simply a decrease in calcium and phosphate, which makes sense. So you may be asked um, how uh, rickets or vitamin D dependent rickets uh, in children or in adults, osteomalacia, um, how does uh, this occur? So you, you actually have a decrease in dietary um, vitamin D and therefore here you have uh, a reduction uh, in 
uh, in, 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 your, in your calcium because you don't have enough uh, vitamin D. And because you have a reduction in calcium, this causes a secondary hyperparathyroidism because of your reduction in serum calcium. And that triggers your chief cells uh, to think that there's a problem. And that, that means that they excrete more um, parathyroid hormone secondary to reduced dietary vitamin D. And as a result, you get overactivity of your osteoclast. They resorb more inorganic extracellular matrix of your bone and therefore causing your osteomalacia or rickets in children. Um, the other thing that quite commonly comes up is uh, type 1 and type 2 hereditary uh, vitamin D dependent rickets. Uh, in type 1, uh, it's important to note that uh, its effects are here at the 1-alpha hydroxylase. It's a defect in the 1-alpha hydroxylase and therefore um, you don't get uh, the active form of vitamin D because it does not get hydrolyzed in the kidneys and therefore leads to reduced calcium and therefore secondary hyperparathyroidism and then rickets because of um, increased osteoclastogenesis. In type 2 hereditary uh, uh, vitamin D dependent rickets, it's actually a problem uh, of the uh, uh, of the intracellular receptors to the 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D. Uh, so it's the receptors that are defective, uh, and, and therefore that leads uh, to a decrease in calcium, uh, serum calcium, and an increase in parathyroid hormone as a result. And, uh, and that's your type 2 hereditary uh, rickets.